YouTube Dave here again. Uh, today I want to answer uh, some viewer questions that pertain to uh, DriveThruRPG or in particular as far as my channel goes, uh, DMs Guild. <clears throat> so for those who aren't quite aware, uh, DMs Guild is a subsidiary of DriveThruRPG, uh, which is a website that offers PDFs of old school RPG stuff as well as some things that are available print on demand. Uh, now I focus mainly on the print-on-demand because PDFs really bother my eyes, like I, I can't read off a computer screen uh, for too long. Uh, when I actually worked at a call center and was forced to look at a computer screen all day, um, I would get migraines almost every day for the better part of three years. And even when I turned the brightness all the way down, it was still, still a problem, I just I don't like reading stuff. Um, so they have a lot of really awesome PDFs. If you're interested and you like reading, you know, PDFs or you're fine with that, then there's treasure trove stuff for you there. Uh, Drive Through RPG focuses on all kinds of different RPGs. Uh, I focus on DM skill because it's all Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so, uh, the questions that I've had asked is uh, one of them pertains to like my collecting future, I guess you could say. Uh, another is about the quality of the products, and another is if I've had any uh, sort of troubles or issues. And I'll get to that uh, later on. So the first, uh, the first question is when it comes to the future of my collecting, am I going to focus more on DMs Guild print on demand than I am physical items in the wild? Like am I going to try to get print on demand or am I going to go for the originals? Now in my opinion, uh, I'm not so concerned about um, having the original copy of things that I would consider getting the print on demand version not a real part of my collection. So. Uh, for me, like that rule cyclopedia that I'm still waiting on, and that's something I'll touch on at the end of the video, um, is something that I would never be able to afford in the wild uh, based on the prices that I've seen them at. Um, but uh, if you look at the roll stats uh, video on the comparison of the original version to the print on demand version, I think I'd much rather have the print on demand version where it has like higher quality paper, it's a thicker book because of the uh, the paper stock that they use. It just seems like I'd rather have that than than original which may use thinner paper probably similar to what they had with the second edition AD&D books and um, and by that I mean like the, the the reprints of them more than anything else and they were really thin paper. So no I don't consider you know getting these items through uh, DMs Guild to be you know not you know, like cheating as far as collecting goes um, and the things that I'm getting with them are things that I either can't find out in the wild because they weren't uh, made available for general retail or I've just never seen in nearly 20 years uh, so the the items that I've ordered so far and I have the two things that I got from my first order it was uh, Dreams of the Red Wizards uh, Scourge of the Surf Sword Coast this was a Sundering Adventure uh, and I'll show this off in a little bit more detail later on. Uh, but this was part of the Sundering series of the D&D Next playtest. Uh, as was for the playtest only. So unlike the other two adventures, it didn't have multiple editions uh, of stats for, for encounters. But this was only used for D&D encounters. And it wasn't made widely or commercially available. So this wasn't something that was sent to retail stores, for example. Uh, the other item that I had is the Player's Companion for the Elemental Evil storyline. And again, that's something that um, was never made available for commercial uh, retail. It's interesting that they put barcodes on the bottom because, again, they weren't actually made available. I don't know if that just makes them look more official. That's maybe how they um, scan like, the covers for their, you know, so you know which box they're in or something like that. I, I have no idea. Uh, the other items that I've ordered is, of course, the Rule Cyclopedia, and the third, um, the third order that I did uh, back at the beginning of March was for a copy of the Creature Catalog um, for D&D Basic, or the companion to the Rule Cyclopedia, <clears throat> as well as a supplement called the Shady Dragon Inn. And that has a bunch of NPCs, and it has a map that you can use for this inn that you can use sort of like a base of operations. It's a really cool thing. A friend of mine has a copy of it. I've never seen it out in the wild. I've never seen Creature Catalog out in the wild. So for me, it, it's worth getting those. Uh, there's a couple other things that I do want to get through drive through RPG because, again, I've just never seen them uh, available like out in the wild. And that's going to be Ravenloft 2. 
uh, which was a uh, which was a, for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition, um, as well as Mordekainen's Fantastic Adventure, which again was for first edition AD and D. Uh, the reason I really want to get that is Dungeon Magazine for issue 112, I think, because I was just looking at them the other day. Uh, did a an update for 3.5, and they just called it um, Moore Castle, M-A-U-R-E, like that's the name of the family, I guess. So I want to get that original version and compare it to the Dungeon Magazine adventure and see how the two kind of stack up against one another. So that's one that I want to get as well. And the only other thing that I really have kind of uh, bookmarked at this point is the uh, Vault of the Dracolich which was something that was done for a D&D uh, International Game Day. And it was uh, an interesting scenario because you could have multiple parties playing the same adventure in the same like adventure space. So it wasn't like you just had Table A and Table B running the same adventure. Um, you had Table A and Table B in the same like dungeon sort of setting, as far as I understand. It said that you could have multiple groups all taking part at the same time in the same thing. So it'd be interesting to see how they do that if there's like a scenario A and B or C or D or whatever it is. So those are the things that I plan on getting from Drive Through RPG. Beyond that, the only other things that I would get uh, print on demand would be more stuff for the basic edition of D&D. Like if they make the Moldvay basic and expert rules available uh, for print on demand, I will definitely be ordering those. Um, I considered the Mentor ones, but um, you know, if I get the rule cyclopedia, then I have the sets of the Mentor D&D uh, rules that I would actually use because I would never touch Immortals because I just the, the idea behind characters so high level that they don't use levels anymore just makes me cringe. I'm sure it's fine, but I'm just not interested in it uh, personally. I had a chance to buy a set of that actually. Uh, it was a box set. I had the box and everything. Uh, this was probably about, jeez, uh, eight years ago? Um, I think it was in 2010. I was at a store. The store doesn't exist anymore, which is which is unfortunate. But they had they had that, and they had they did have the companion rules as well. But I just wasn't interested in that back at the time because you know I, I wasn't really I was looking for like basic and expert only. I wasn't really looking to go beyond that. Uh, but they were also charging like eighty bucks a set with the box included, so way too much for me. Um, so yeah, so those are the things that I plan on collecting uh, in the future. As for the other th questions that I've had asked, I've been asked what my uh, experiences are with the items when I get them, and what the quality of them are, because some people have said that they've got scanned, because like, what they do is they scan the originals into their system and they make the item using the scans. So it's not, you know, um, it's not like they have the original, uh, like, printings of them or they have the original files that they, they use from the, you know, companies that created them. They scan a copy and then they create their uh, print-on-demand versions. So I've had people ask if their images are blurry, if they're fuzzy. So, like I said, what I think I'll do next is just kind of flip through uh, the two books that I have and focus on some things like some of the images, some of the artwork, and, uh, you know, because uh, I think they look all right, but I'll let you guys sort of decide on your own. And then the third part is basically if I've had any issues uh, with them. So we'll uh, get to that as well. So here are the two uh, print-on-demand items that I have received so far uh, from the orders that I have made. So the first one um, that we'll look at here is Scourge of the Sword Coast. This was a adventure that was put out, or an adventure that was put out, uh, during the Sundering series. This was part of the D&D Next uh, playtest. And just take a look inside. So this, you know, the covers, uh, nice glossy. It's got a bit of a textured feel to it too. Uh, I don't know if the texture will show up too much on the, on the glare. Um, but you might be able to see a little bit of it if you look sort of at the edges of the light there. And so it's got a bit of a nice texture to it and I, I do like it. Um, the back is nice looking as well. Um, and it has, you know, this adventure is designed to kick off the 2014 February through May season of the D&D Encounters official play program. So this is before uh, Adventurers League. Uh, the spine itself is basic. It just says, you know, Dreams of the Red Wizard, Scourge of the, uh, of the Sword Coast. Uh, and if you take a look inside, so inside they have, uh, is the covers the same on both or just maybe just the, the one here? But so here's the scanned image of the uh, of the cover, 
And uh, I mean, in my opinion, it looks really good. You know, every, the writing stuff looks nice and clear. Uh, we'll just kind of go in and just look at the, uh, the formatting. Again, you know, the print all looks great, in my opinion. Uh, starting the adventure, you know, the background information. Oh. <clears throat> you know, the text, like I said, it comes through very nicely. Um, it, it, it does look very professionally done. So, I mean, like I said, I've had some people say that, you know, their images have come, or their products have come, and they've been sort of blurry, or... And that was probably, I would say, even though these are, like, scanned items, and they're using them off of the original scans that they make, um, I would say that if you get them and they're blurry, it's probably just an error with the actual printing at the time, and not the files that they had used. I mean, here's an image here. Again, it looks very, you know, very clear. There doesn't seem to be any blurring. It, you know, this looks like the exact same thing that you would have had you have picked this up from, you know, Wizards of the Coast directly. So here we got the town of Daggerford, or Daggerford, Daggerford, however you want to pronounce it. And even the small writing here, as you can see, does come off uh, nice and clear. The map itself looks very, looks very nice. All the all the details are there. It looks very similar to the maps that you would see in like the starter set, or you know the modern D and D adventures. You got the map of the uh, the Sword Coast, or at least a portion of the Sword Coast where this adventure takes place in, with uh, Daggerford right there. Um, so yeah, uh, I still plan on doing an actual review of the adventure. It just hasn't, I haven't had the opportunity yet, and I, I sort of apologize for that. There's been a lot of things going on <clears throat> in the couple of months since uh, I've picked this up. Uh, so I got this, I think it was in the middle of January, <coughs> when, I, uh, when I finally got it, or near the end of January. So, anyway... Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the quality has just, you know, been really great. Like I, and this is their standard um, paper stock. So some products will let you choose between a standard or premium uh, paper stock. And this is just the standard. It feels nice. Um, you know, it's not glossy, sort of like some of the modern D&D stuff is. But it still feels very nice. Um, you know, it doesn't feel like cheap paper or anything like that. And again, the images look really great. Um, so... <clears throat> Uh, this adventure, if I recall correctly, was sort of a lead-up to, um, I want to say the next season of Adventurer's League was um, Dead and Thay, <coughs> because that was, again, only available um, through the, um, as far as I know, it was available only through D&D Encounters. I don't think, like, it was never made available for a commercial release. And um, so, but they did redo it in Tales from the Awning Portal. So if you get this, then you can also, uh, if you have Tales from the Awning Portal, you can still kind of conclude uh, that storyline. There was also another adventure that took place, and there's just a few blank pages there. There's another adventure that took place before this. Um, it was called, um, I think it was Ghosts of Dragonspear Castle. Um, but that was made for a different party of adventurers, different level ranges. And um, so, like, the events that happened in there affect this adventure, but it's not a sequel in the fact that you don't play the same characters from that one into this one, because this is for, like, second through fourth level characters. So, anyway, so that's, that's that one, and like I said, it looks really nice. Now, my player's companion is a slightly different story, so uh, when I got this, you know, it came uh, very nice shape, very good condition. Uh, they package these in sort of just like cardboard sleeves and mail them out. <coughs> so it's not the greatest in terms of like the packaging or the, there's like, there's no bubble wrap or there's no um, air, pot, air packages or anything to sort of absorb impact. So <coughs> that is one thing to sort of keep in mind. Now, if you get the um, um, priority shipping or their, their second level of shipping, um, that may be different, but that tends to be so much more expensive that I don't really feel like spending the money, and it's still a possibility that the only difference is time, and not necessarily the way that they patch it up themselves. Uh, so this one here uh, is in a little bit of rough shape, so it was uh, dinged up kind of bad when I got it. 
Um, it does look a lot better. Um, I had a lot of heavy books and stuff that I had kind of placed on top of it. Um, there are still, you can still see, obviously, um, some of the damage that happened uh, during shipping, but it still, it, it does look better uh, than it did when I first got it. Uh, but again, we'll have a look inside here. Now, this was supposed to be their premium paper, um, their premium stock. It feels pretty much the same as the um, the standard stuff that I got, or at least I think it was standard paper, because um, I got the cheapest version of the Scourge of the Sword Coast that I could. But again, you know, the images look really good. Now, this is also slightly different because this was a PDF um, that was only made available print on demand, so this, this was something that never existed as a physical product before, so this wouldn't be a scan, this would be like the actual uh, files, uh, the PDF file um, that they are doing, but again, you know, the quality looks really good. The only issue that I've had with it again was the way that it, uh, you know, arrived after the, uh, the shipping process, but um, you know, I've seen some people say that they would, you know, send it back um, if theirs was kind of beat up. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, it took me so long to get it, which is something I'll talk about later. Uh, it took me so long to get this. Um, I think it was nearly two months, I think, um, for me to actually receive this this product. So I don't, I wasn't in a hurry to say, no, this isn't good enough for me. Um, send me another one. Um, so I kept it. I mean, even if my rule cyclopedia, when it, it does eventually um, arrive, even if the corners are beat up a little bit, I'm not gonna necessarily say that, you know, that's an issue. Only if it's so horribly mangled that, um, you know, it looks like it's gonna fall apart or something, or like the cover is bent all, like if it gets bent at a 45 degree angle, because it's a hardcover book, I mean, then I'll say, yeah, um, you guys need to, to replace this version. But, you know, just a little bit of, of uh, crumpling and stuff like that, it's unfortunate. But it wasn't enough for me to say, you know, I want to send this back. Uh, that said, there are a few other issues that I do want to talk about when it comes to receiving my items, and I will talk about that in the next segment. So this is actually the second time I'm recording the third part of my video talking about DMs Guild print-on-demand items. Uh, the biggest reason is I just got uh, an email back from them, and it's got some pretty exciting news, but it kind of nullifies pretty much everything I was going to say in the original uh, third part of the video. So I said I you know, wanted to reference a couple of issues that I had with receiving items, and I'm going to do that here as well, uh, but there is a change coming. It's not official yet, but it is something that they are looking at uh, fixing up, and something tells me that I'm not the only one that's been having this issue. So the first thing is um, my... So I had mentioned that I had to have replacement copies sent of my of the order that I had shown off there with the uh, Scourge of the Sword Coast and uh, Elemental Evil um, companion, Player's Companion. Um, so the, a few days prior to recording this video I similarly had to contact them about not receiving my D&D Rule Cyclopedia and it's been about it's been about the seven week mark uh, since I ordered it and it still hasn't shown up. Um, so I just contacted them and just said, you know, uh, I haven't received it as of yet, and, um, you know, one of the biggest things that I noticed when I did receive my uh, other copies of the, my replacement copies of the other books, is that they were being printed in the United Kingdom. And I just said, you know, hey, is there any way that, you know, the books can, that are going to Canada can be printed in the U.S.? Because I know that there is a U.S. printer um, and there's, you know, like uh, the channel Roll Stats, he got his D&D Rule Cyclopedia within a few days. Now, I would still expect it'd probably be about, you know, three or four weeks to get it in Canada, uh, even if it came from the U.S., but that would still be a far cry better than having it sent overseas. So, originally, what I wanted to do was sort of um, create sort of, I, I don't want to say a call to action, but just raise awareness of the fact that if you're living in Canada, your books are being printed across the Atlantic Ocean, and that is causing the massive delays in receiving them. It's also uh, causing the increase in odds that they're going to go missing. Like, I had two orders in a row that, um, my first two orders, I will, I will say on top of that, uh, both have to be replaced because they hadn't shown up. So for me that was just a huge um, failure rate in terms of the deliveries. And I was hoping that people might come together and contact DMs Guild and drive through RPG and see if they can you know, get that fixed. But uh, then the reason that I'm re-recording this 
is that that may not be necessary now because um, in between the time that I recorded uh, the early parts of the video that you saw, including the third part, which I actually recorded before I flipped through the books, um, I got an email back because I, I sent them an email before I started recording just saying, you know, I'm looking on my online order and it doesn't show the updated information about, you know, it being uh, uh, labeled as missing or lost or not delivered and that a request for a replacement copy has been sent. So normally that happens pretty much right away. And that didn't happen. It was, you know, several days. And it still hadn't happened. So they actually got back to me <clears throat> just as I was starting to put the, uh, the video clips together. And so the good news is for anyone living in Canada, uh, DriveThruRPG and DM Skill, which is part of DriveThruRPG, are working uh, out something so that uh, anyone ordering products from them in Canada will have them printed off within North America and sent through North America. Um, so they'll be printed in the States and sent to Canada instead of being printed over in Europe and having to come all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, the fact that it's also not doing those overseas deliveries, it may also potentially decrease the chances that your products arrive with, you know, dings and, and damage and stuff like that. I'm not 100% on that because you're still going through quite a few different uh, postal facilities in the United States uh, and even probably a couple within Canada depending on where you live. But it's good news, so my the biggest thing that I was going to complain about and the only thing that I consider to be a downside to my interactions with uh, Drive-Thru RPG looks like they're going to be addressed in the near future. So I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Uh, and I'll probably try to contact them back in, you know, I don't think it's going to be right away, but I'd say, you know, give it another month or two. And uh, hopefully by that point that it'll all be sorted out and you'll be getting your North American books within North America printed and delivered all within the same continent, which for me would be really exciting because it's just, it's just, for me it was a bit too much that it would come over from England and that's probably why, like, the shipping costs were higher than I kind of felt that they should have been. Uh, like the standard version of shipping, which was like, um, I think it was four to six weeks or something like that that they had stated. Um, so that was still like, you know, <clears throat> almost $20 uh, by the time that I, you know, had everything sort of added in. Uh, so with taxes and all, all that good stuff. So, you know, I'm hoping that again, that'll be a thing of the past. Um, so my biggest issue with drive through RPG, the only issue, the only negative that I had to say, um, it looks like it's being dealt with, so um, I had referenced it in different parts of the video. I'm not going to re-record the whole thing because that was just, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff that, you know, there's only a few references. So, again, it's it's good news for anyone living in Canada, so for the, the time being, you know, if you are having uh, issues receiving your items, just continue to let them know. Their customer service department has been awesome to deal with throughout both of these orders, so I can't praise that enough. It's a shame that I've had to deal with them a couple of times, but they have been very, very good about it, and they were sincerely, you know, uh, apologetic about the fact that, you know, it took a few days before they got the uh, the, the, the lost copy report sent to the, uh, to the printers, and I'm okay with that. Um, I, I really am. You know, these things happen. It was, I think, on a Friday, uh, Friday afternoon that I had contacted them, so it makes sense that there may be, you know, a little bit of a delay, but they got that straightened out, and they gave me that information, which I just want to pass along. You know, they certainly didn't have to, <clears throat> but it is great that they that they did that, and like I said, I can't imagine that I'm the only one that's had these issues if they're actually, like, trying to get it fixed, so it's, it's awesome, it's good news, and it's going to make the service all the much better for us Canadians going forward if we can get our products in, I would assume, to be a more timely manner uh, and from a much closer location than, you know, across the Atlantic Ocean. So anyway, uh, that was my video on just sort of my uh, print-on-demand items and my experiences. I hope you enjoyed. And again, if you live in Canada and you've had similar issues to me in terms of uh, not getting your products sent or not receiving them, uh, having to have replacement copies sent, because I can only imagine that's costing them a fair amount of money too, right? Because, <clears throat> you you know, they don't charge you for the shipping for the second item. So, I mean, they're, they're losing money by doing, you know, having this as well. So it's a good decision all around. But if you've had these issues, then just hopefully, you know, in the next little while, that'll all go away. So anyway, thank you guys again very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.